Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. Come on in, let's get busy. Always something to do here, isn't there? Good to see everyone, thank you for showing up. There's my girl, Catherine. We're gonna be talking about our time versus our energy. It's gonna be a good, I think a good uh, thing for you. I'm, uh, once again, I'm pulling my rabbits out of my hat. This is from my journal, so, you know, you guys have a sneak peek. Hello, Amber, hello, Sarah, good to see you. Sarah, your, your before and after pictures are quite stunning. Thanks for sharing those. And thank you, everybody, by the way, for sharing this. And Anna, thanks for your question as well. Um, <clears throat> I am not going to be talking about imposter syndrome today, but it is on my menu, okay? Hi, Denise. Helen, good to see you. Yeah, we, I have this already ready to go. Mary, Alice, and Dawn. Um, it's, it's Lovely's time, isn't it? <laughs> I have such a busy day today, you guys. It's just suddenly got weird. Um, we had, Mark and I just had this whole discussion about, you know what? As much as we love it here, we're going to have to move. Um, the internet just keeps flipping out on us and we're going to have to move. Isn't that sad? We're going to stay close by, but we just, we're, we're really starting to look, um, in earnest. For a house so keep all of that in prayer for us anyway it's good to see you all thanks for storming the gates let's do this we've got some thirsty topics to talk about that's what we do on thirsty thursday of course you know that this is the daily dish show where we together bring vibrancy back into our lives heart mind body and soul because we're all connected that way isn't that just funny how that works you know if you take out one component and just go after one thing, you're gonna be in, in, in the, you know, left scraping up all the little bits and pieces of things you left behind. So stop it. <laughs> Start seeing yourself as the whole woman that you are, you know? The whole woman that you are. This is really important. This is massively important. And when we do this, we just start feeling connected with ourselves, don't we? We start seeing things from a completely different perspective. And right now, today, we're gonna to be talking about the difference between basically time management and energy management, which for me, this was a big aha, and I've got everything. Um, I'm gonna share with you all the stuff. I don't know where I got all this. I know I was listening to something. I probably had a pop. Whoa, hey there, hey girl, hey. <laughs> Somebody sent me a big, Gift, that's so funny. Um, yeah, I've got my hot milk mix going too, Emily. Look at that. I've got hot milk mix, L-glutamine, and a shot of vitamin C. This is this is Jenny's concoction. It's a great one. It works. And I think I overdosed on purple. We had um, we were getting low on vegetables, but we had this massive head of purple cabbage. It was purple cabbage here, purple cabbage there, purple. I felt like I was turning into a gigantic purple cabbage. And suddenly, last night, my stomach just swole up and I felt just sick to my stomach. I was in the bathtub thinking, this is awful, I'm gonna barf. But you know, I just think I hit the cruciferous uh, button too hard. And today I'm just all about having, I had a very plain smoothie this morning. I'm having my this and I'm gonna have a little bone broth. Uh, later, but I think I'm I'm probably gonna just you know step away from food. My tummy is telling me a little something. I need to listen to that. This is one of the things that we get to do when we are sprinters. We learn to listen to our bodies. Aren't they just so amazing? Yeah, they are. Of course, you know, fearlessly and wonderfully made. Have you heard that before? So we have a webinar tonight. You know that, right? Of what's next. Now this is all brand new material. 
most of it's going to be pointing you toward what is the mindset that's going to take you forward. Most of it is. Not all of it, but most of it. We have a lot of different things too that we're going to be adding in, but I just want you to know that the most important thing that I have seen, that I have experienced in my life in order to get things going, in order to, you know, overall drop 100 pounds is uh, fix this stuff between my ears. That's the big thing. Plans are plans. You can, I promise you can get a plan anywhere. You can find it anywhere. You can pick up a good book anywhere. There's a ton of people that I can say their stuff is really good or stay away from this or whatever. There's myths we have to bust. There's all kinds of things that we have to put into play and into perspective if we're gonna go forward, if this is gonna be something that we can do for the rest of our lives. If this is gonna be something that we can finally convert ourselves from being this addicted, uh, food-obsessed eater to being an intuitive eater where we're not obsessed by food all the time. That, to me, is the freedom. That's the freedom. That's what we're gonna be talking about a little bit tonight. You know, I'm gonna take plenty of questions. You just need to show up. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash burn to get your seat at the webinar. And even if you can't make it tonight, because it's at 7 p.m. Eastern, even if you can't make it, still sign up because we'll send you the replay. We will not send you the replay, obviously, if, you're, if you don't sign up and you're not interested, but hey, I say it's time to sign up. And speaking of that, have you, do you, do you know we have show notes? Every, like today, this morning's email had yesterday's show notes. So if that's important to you and you wanna get the show notes, the only way to get them is to be on our email list. Go to savingdinner.com, annoying pop-up comes up. And just put your name and address, or your name and email address in there. And we will also send you a menu for a week. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's not like we're not, you know, we're gonna be bombing you with tons of spam. You know, we send out an email a day at the most too, sometimes as a reminder, but it's never, you know, there's not a whole lot of emails there and it's not every single day either. So we love you, but we're not gonna bombard you. Promise, that's a promise. That's, um, that's just how we like. Uh, Sarah said she's loving the show notes. Thank you so much, Sarah. You know, Amber does them and she puts a lot into it and I really appreciate the effort because, you know, it just, it, what it does is it helps to solidify the message. We have a message that we wanna get out. We have a message that we believe is important. We see the gap between where you are, where I am, where we all are, and where we want to go. There is a bridge that needs to be built. And that's what we're doing with these shows. We're building that bridge together. Isn't that great? And not only that, but the community is just absolutely exquisite, in my opinion. It is absolutely exquisite. So I always say, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> Autumn was out rocking her chickens. Fred, Queenie, and Rosie and Betty are her chickens. I love this. You know what, Autumn? That's, that sets well with me. We had Godzilla and um, a few other chickens. Godzilla was our chicken that laid eggs the size of a goose egg. Um, I, have, I had all of our chickens named. We had them all named. So I love chickens. They are the amazing thing. Jane is giving out. Amber, you're getting your kudos here. Great job with the show notes. She does. She does a beautiful job with the show notes. And of course, we have our supplement of the week, which everybody is going bonkers for because... Now you can have your organic ACV without having to drink it down. There's so many people who find it so irritating. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. You can, you can get this. Um, ask Jenny, we wait, how long were we waiting for this? They had to source it for us. They could get all kinds of ACV. There's, and there is all kinds of ACV supplements out there. But is it organic? Hmm? Does it have the mother in it? This does. And it's awesome. So grab it now. You can grab three bottles. We'll put the fourth one in your cart for you free. And if you put ships free, it will ship free. So that's a screaming deal. And it'll keep you going for four months for the price of three. It's pretty great. And I'll tell you something. If you have, we have a really good blog post too. Fabulous blog post that um, gives you the whole, the whole lowdown on the benefits of um, apple cider vinegar. Acidic acid is, is the, the thing in there, but it's also, it, you know, it's a prebiotic. It feeds your gut. I love that stuff. Feeds your gut. You know, we have a whole army down there. 
We've got the good guys and the bad guys, and they're duking it out all the time. Someone's got to feed the troops. Someone's got to feed the troops. That's what this stuff does. It feeds the troops. That's what a pre prebiotic does. That's what fiber does. And that's why it's so exquisitely important. So go to savingdinner.com forward slash show so that you can see the supplements. We always, that's where we put our supplement of the week. It's easy to get. We see everything, you know, everything is there. You will not have a problem with that. Also, have you seen our new quote of the week? It's such a good one for this week because we're on day four, y'all. We're, we're on the other side of the sprint. There are many things that seem impossible, only so long as one does not attempt them. <laughs> I think that's such a great quote because it's, I mean, it really does throw down the gauntlet, doesn't it? Yeah, sure, it's too hard, but you haven't tried. Hmm, do we wanna be those people? I don't think so. That's why you're here. You don't wanna be that person. You know, it's easy to be like the crowd. What is the crowd doing? They're doing nothing. They're channel surfing. They're on Facebook all day. They're just, you know, it's easy to be a part of that crowd. But if you want to have and reclaim your life, you got to redeem your time. And your time and your energy, while they're two different things, one of them is easier to manage than the other. And it seems like it has a, a domino effect. It's kind of this loop going back to your energy. So that's gonna be a good thing. This is a really good thing. These are um, some good notes in here. I'm, I'm pleased with them. I found this and I went, I gotta talk about that today because it is so critically important. All right, we also, you, it's not too late to get out on the, um, we're gonna do the Be Strong, Stay Strong uh, challenge next Monday, next Monday. We're, every time we're, we end a sprint, we're gonna go jump into something else and we wanna stay connected in a community, more important than ever right now. We also wanna keep the momentum going. This is a free challenge. All you have to do to get it is go to savingdinner.com forward slash strong um, and e easily, you know, watch the webinar. There's a few things, the webinar is gonna give you the whole lowdown on it and plus a bunch of links that you can uh, download stuff from. So it's free. I mean, come on, you know, don't you wanna be the gal with the biceps? Not. I'm not talking big, fat, you know, horrific biceps like Arnold. I'm talking about being a strong woman. You know, when we are physically strong, it's, it's interesting how we become mentally strong. And mentally strong should tell us that we need to think about physically strong. Our bodies mirror, really, what's going on inside. So let's be the strongest, healthiest version of ourselves. This is important. We are, we are one, we cannot disconnect from our physical self and our sp spiritual self, emotional self, uh, you know, our soul. It's all connected. That's how we're made. Good grief, isn't it so great? Our Thanksgiving menus are free. Do you want it? Timeline, recipe, shopping guide, um, all the troubleshooting, the turkey triage uh, troubleshooting guide, all the things. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash thanks and you can pick them all up. You can pick one up if you're keto, if you're paleo, if you just want the classic, they're all there. Fabulous stuff. Get it going. Get it going. Um, the other thing is that we have going on tomorrow's Q&A. Show the heck up. <laughs> send in a question. Send them to support at savingdinner.com and in that subject line, if you put question for Leanne on Friday, it gets put into the queue. Otherwise, you miss out for another week. Do that today. Do it, do it, do it, do it. All right, let's dig in. What shall we? <laughs> oh, Sarah, don't say Thanksgiving is two weeks from today. Who's got their turkey? I do, I do. Here we are with this big 14 pound turkey, just Mark and I. <laughs> you think we're gonna be having some turkey? Oh, and by the way, in that turkey thing, I think, in the Thanksgiving menus that I was just telling you about, I believe there's some recipes for Thanksgiving turkey uh, leftovers. So there you go. Who said this? Uh, Anna used to be a weightlifter. What? You could deadlift, deadlift your own body weight? That's impressive. But you know what, Anna? It's okay to be out of shape. You know, we gotta start somewhere. Muscle memory. We do have muscle memory. I One of the things that I have noticed I have this big dent in my leg right there on the side, uh, right by my kneecaps, and it just, 
it's um it's an athletic ballet muscle thing that's from when i was a kid you know, i took 10 years of ballet and that's where it came from and i was a cheerleader in high school you know i had that big and it, it came right back as soon as i got right back to it muscle memory it's incredible fearfully and wonderfully made let's check in with our bodies like that believing the best and getting rid of the rest right anna You've got this, man. If you are a weight lifter, I have massive, massive uh, respect for you. You can do it again. It's not too late. Mm. I think it should be. I think it, you know, I think that all women over the age of 50, I think we should just say collectively that we're going to be in the best physical shape of our lives. And, you know, it might take six months, a year, two years. Who cares? The fact is we are working our way toward vibrancy. It's one step at a time. Your particular path might be a little longer than mine or mine might be longer than yours. Doesn't matter. We're gonna be living this, this life anyway. How about doing it on that level of vibrancy? I just can't, I can't, I, that, I keep thinking about that. How, you know, we just like, oh, it's this, that. And of course, you know, what we focus on expands, but what we dwell on becomes our destiny. So if we're dwelling on this stuff and saying it's just impossible and this is what I was and this, that, and the other thing, okay, well, there you go. There's your little pool of negativity. Have fun in there. Otherwise, jump out and say, you know what? I did this before. I can do it again. That's what I see for you, Anna. That's what I see. Let's go out there. I mean, let's collectively, let's lift some iron, man. If you can deadlift your body weight, mad respect, mad respect. Yeah, I know that was your past self, but let's go to the next the next level and bring it back. You know what to do. You know, it's not like we're left without any knowledge or any tools, <laughs> are we? No. So now today we're gonna reclaim that energy. This is for you, Anna. I think this is gonna help you. We're gonna reclaim that energy. We are. We're gonna reclaim our time too, but we're gonna do it from the energy perspective instead of the time perspective, because I think sometimes what happens is we put the cart before the horse instead of having the horse in front. And you're gonna see the loop as I talk about this. And it, it's about being efficient and productive and getting things done, yes. But it's also adds into the whole equation of how we feel about ourselves, you know? Because we, so often, we have this huge conversation in our heads, so often of putting ourselves down and feeling like crap and having this whole conversation going. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks with some self-talk that's really going to help because we all self-talk. You know, some of us worse than others. Some of us have this long, ongoing conversation that we can't even switch off at night. Thank heavens for sleepies. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you that stuff has just changed my life. But it's really important to stand from the perspective of understanding that when you're protecting your energy, when you are indeed uh, making the very best of your energy that will turn around and help you to redeem your time I'm gonna explain that to you because I think I think this is an important um, I think this is an important principle that we all need to be living by being protective of our energy where your energy goes there your life flows is the truth so if you think about that and when you do the big picture analysis and you're looking at it and you're thinking about where all that energy is going. And you think about that and you look at it and you go, yikes, wrong spot. Yikes, wrong place. And your, your, you know, your brain basically follows suit. Have you noticed that? It leads you around. Your fear oftentimes leads you around. Your doubts lead you around if we choose to dwell on those things. But again, if we are going back to wanting to redeem our time, we have to go back to first minding our energy because the energy is what's going is, is what this whole thing is predicated on. That's, what's, that's the needle mover. Because have you noticed how when you are putting the, the big rocks in the jar first, how you notice how much energy you have, how much more you're getting done, how much more efficient you are, how much better you feel about yourself, this is because the energy is what's leading the time management, if you will. It's amazing how that happens. So let's talk about this a little bit. Because we fall into this whole thing, the efficiency trap, you know? This is where we think that we're magical multitaskers 
And the truth is we are not. We walk out of, you know, we walk out of kitchens or bathrooms with the water running, thinking we can also do this and we can also do that and, and come into, you know, a disaster. Or we think, you know, that we're, we have this capability of just making all the things happen and we're organizing this over here, doing this over there, helping, you know, Johnny with his homework over here and there's something burning on the stove and you look at your house and you think, holy crap, how did that happen? It's just like, the whole thing has blown up. This is because we fall into this efficiency trap. We think we're being efficient when really what we're doing is multitasking away our lives. And you know what that is? That is the difference between being laser focused and having um, just a light, a, one dim light bulb going off in a, in a room. If you wanna get to the thing that you're trying to do, you, want, you have to pinpoint it. It needs to be a laser right on top of what it is that we're doing. You cannot do that with multitasking. Multitasking is a big time myth. And you know, honestly, the stuff that I have read about multitasking, mostly men have written about it. Yeah, men, those guys. No, it's not for us. It is not for us, we're connectors. We're, we're relationship builders. This is how our DNA works. What we need to do is, is work on one thing at a time. I, you know, I said to you yesterday, the only time we multitask is when we plug in the washing machine and the, and the, and the dryer and the you know, dishwasher, get all the appliances going at one time. That's terrific multitasking, by the way. The rest of it, no. If it requires our attention, our attention needs to be on it. So let's shift to being effective rather than getting more done because we think multitasking is gonna help us get more done. Well, this more done thing holds us back. It's not about getting more done, it's about getting things done well. So if we take it one at a time, it will take us out of this whole efficiency trap and instead put us in on the focus, getting things done, and by the way, you know what happens? We find what we're getting more done by doing this instead of being scattered all over the place. The other thing we have to look at is our production capability. Right? Remember we talked about this with the production capability versus capacity? Well, it is, capability is that you can do it. Capacity is that you have a whole lot more talent for it than you think you do. Here's the thing. If we think about what athletes do on a regular basis, they push through things that we give up on so easily. For example, if they're out for a run or let, let's not use running because we, you know we know some people we know that injuries can happen with that and and knees and all this other kind of stuff. let's not use that but you know somebody who's training some some athlete that's training gymnastics for example you know they're in the gym and they're thinking i'm tired you know or you know i and my my hands hurt because they're they've got blisters or whatever but they have to push through they've got to nail the thing and you know what they do instead they use self talk not in the way you and i do the way you and i do oh my gosh this hurts it's so bad ah, i'm going to leave that's it i'm done you know what they do is they say yes this hurts but i know that i can nail it for the next thing and they separate themselves from the pain and sometimes for us, I think an important thing that we need to do is separate ourselves from the pain of doing the one thing that we really need to get done. It's hard, it's, it's difficult. It might mean that you have to stay up a little bit later to get something done, or it might mean that you, know, you have to do something you really don't want to, like vacuum the floor or scrub a toilet or whatever. But the satisfaction of having that done is the most important thing. We talked about this, the two pains, the pain of regret, which is huge and awful, or the pain of doing it anyway when you don't want to. There, every single decision in life, those two things are, are, are the decisions. Regret or do it anyway, you know? We, those are the two things. The thing that we know is the do it anyway is a lot sh smaller and a lot easier, really, at the end of the day when all things are said and done than the pain of regret. The pain of regret is huge and growing while the pain of getting it done and doing it anyway, uh, not only is it easier once it's done especially, there is never any regret that I, I did it. Oh man, I, I really regret following through on that, said no one ever, right? 
that's the thing we've got to be looking at because when we can start you know framing things like this um, we start to we start to think differently you can't help but think differently when you start to do that and this is a self-talk hint by the way take this one to the bank write this one down and that is every time you start to think oh that's too hard it's whatever write all that down in your journal and just say you know what's this about blah 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 blah, blah. I, well I'm gonna go do it anyway then go do it anyway come back to your journal and write it all out do it for like a week just so that you can not forget what that what it feels like because we we when we go to this place of doing the regretful thing of of having this pain of regret and pushing it off and delaying and procrastinating and whatever else we do and then end up never doing it that mountain of regret grows by the day grows by the task and it gets heavier and heavier and more burdensome it does and it wrecks your psyche because that's the only thing that you can see. It's taking over. It's big, it's growing. It's like the blob, like blah. Did you ever see the blob in the 60s? <laughs> it was the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> you gotta watch it, it's a super bad B-horror movie. But this is the whole thing, you know? This is the whole thing, and this is how we can move out of that. This is what athletes do. They divorce themselves from the pain. They divorce themselves from having to grunt it out. They, they don't. They flip it, they look at it, and they start using this, this self-talk because you know what it's all about? This, I want you to underline this. It is a, the element of purpose. They have a purpose in mind. They want to nail that thing on the bars or they want to nail that thing on the rings, whatever it is that they're doing. They want to nail it. They're willing to get through the pain to get to the goal. We need to be like those athletes, you know, and have that athletic mindset. This is what separates a gold medal Olympic Olympian from somebody who's just, you know, they did okay in high school and college or whatever, and that just wasn't interested enough to go further. You know, if you're interested, if you're hot for this and you've got all the emotions behind it, you know what happens to these Olympic, they, they hire coaches, they do all the things, they eat in a certain way, they train in a certain way. This can be us. And I'm not talking about that extreme, but I'm talking about what do we want at the end of our goal? Vibrancy, maybe? A better life, a better connection with our, with our people, a better connection with ourselves and with God? It's all connected, you know. You neglect one part of you, it's basically spitting. You just say, you know, giving God the raspberry. I believe it is. Because the gift of you, your whole self, is the gift you're giving back to the world. This is how you fulfill your purpose. You can't do that if you're just saying, oh God, whatever, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do whatever, or I'm just gonna do this, I'm not gonna take care of myself, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. I am just gonna do what it is that I wanna do and ignore all the pain, ignore all the regret, ignore all of that until one day there's a reckoning. There is, there's always a reckoning. And let me just tell you, I've coached a lot of women who've been in that place of reckoning, sitting across from a doctor who's giving them the bad news. Because you can't keep going in a direction that is not gonna take you to the place of vibrancy. Because that goal of vibrancy is the goal of health. And health is, is all encompassing. It's a humongous loop. There are steps to all of it. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It is all connected. And you will never be able to convince me otherwise. And this is what makes us whole people. This is what puts purpose in, in our path. This is what creates that incredible life that, that God gives us fearlessly, wonderfully made. We're very complex, multi-level, multifaceted, incredible women. That's why I want you to find your voice in light, your life. That's why I want you to step up. That's why I want you to be in the rising tide and be lifted up with all the other boats. That's why I say this stuff over and over again, because it's critical, it's important, it's the needle mover in your life. It's not just the needle between your toes first thing in the morning when you're weighing yourself or the measuring tape. It's all the things and they all come into this and what you're saying about yourself is the thing that's gonna show up in your life. You can't have it any other way. It's just the way it is. The other thing is we have to eliminate the gray zone. You know, there's black and there's white. And when it comes to food, 
There is food that your body just loves. It's the good stuff. It's the white stuff. It's the stuff that cools the inflammation. It's the stuff that feeds and nourishes your cells. It's the stuff that makes you feel good. And there's the other stuff over here, which again, it's like the, the two pains, right? This is the stuff that, mmm, delicious. And then there's an enormous amount of regret that comes later and a whole bunch of consequences that you just can't hide. And you know, you might be sitting on it right now. I know I am. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You can't duck away from this stuff. You have to do, um, and when we're managing our energy, you know, this is what we do too. We kind of dip our toe over here and dip our toe over there. We're multitasking with our energy. We're multitasking with the way we feel, our efficiency and all the rest of it. And guess what? We never get to that place of absolute relaxation, of absolute unplugging, of absolute being able to manage our own energy. Because we think we can go somehow in the gray zone. Well, I'll, and I do it all the time. Well, I'll just work. I'll just work for a couple hours, Mark. This is on Sunday. Four hours later, I come out and I was only going to do an hour. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to unplug or are you going to go work? What is it? Choose. You got to choose your lane, right? You can't say, well, I'm going to go this way north. Nope. Turn around, go south. You're not going to get anywhere. And this is exactly how it is when we are trying to manage our energy. When we manage our energy, we reclaim our time. It just, it works that way. This is the loop, you know? This is what the loop looks like. And then the other thing is, oh my gosh, there's a fight going on inside. I always tell you that you've got a fight going on in your gut. You do, it's a war, it's a full on bloody war. You've got the good guys, you got the bad guys, you know? That's why we prebiotic and feed the good guys. That's why we probiotic and add more to the troops. We wanna keep the scales in our favor so we don't get sick, so we don't feel terrible, so we're not feeling sluggish and, and achy and all the things that come from having a leaky gut and a bad balance in your, in your microbiome. We don't want that. Well, in your head is a similar kind of a thing. We all have our own balance going on in there. It's really interesting. So when we are in the place of overthinking either our past or our future, we don't have any energy to give toward today. You know, we're stuck. We're stuck. It's that's the treadmill thoughts. That's the place of just going, you know, over and over, just walking and walking. Walk. Where are you going? Nowhere. That is the carousel of crazy. We do this with the way we think. We do this with the way we manage our time. We do this with the food. We do this all the time. And it's, it's insanity because the carousel of crazy is never going to get you anywhere. You might go up with your weight. You might come down with your weight. But is it gonna stabilize? Not as long as you stay there. You're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again. And when that stops working, go find a new guru, go find a new diet. Maybe there's a supplement that can help me. Maybe there's a program. Maybe there's a hidden book somewhere on Amazon that I just haven't found yet. There's secrets out there that I don't know. Is that what it is? What about this with this, this whole idea of, of what we do in our head? Same dang thing. It's the same thing. We are stuck in these thoughts the carousel of crazy thoughts. Well, but if I can just resolve this, if she would just apologize, if only, then I could. If we are dependent on somebody doing something for us, then we do not have command over our own thoughts. We're giving up rent space in our heads for somebody who's probably not thinking about us. If, especially somebody who's passed or whatever, yeah, I'm not gonna ever say to anybody, who's had like a bad experience or a traumatic experience even, or, or a traumatic long-term experience. But where are you today? And where do you want for your future? You've got to make a decision on allowing yourself to stop overthinking about the, the past, stop overthinking about the future, and instead live in today and create the life that you want to lead. Because I'm gonna tell you the secret right now. That's where the vibrancy is. That's where the vibrancy, it's not when you get there, it's being there now. No, you might not be in your exact genes you wanna be in, but you're in the exact place you need to be in to get there. Do you get me with this? This is, the, this is reclaiming our lives. We're reclaiming our time by understanding we have to reclaim our energy first. 
And our brain uses up 20% of all the, you know, of all the food and everything that we eat. That's where all the energy goes. You know, we, we get mentally fatigued. You know what that feels like. Well, this is how we stop that. We recognize it, we stop it, we start the self-talk, we write about it in our journals, we even talk about it with our therapists or our priests or our pastors or our best friends or our spouses. But what we do is we deal with it and we put it into proper perspective and place. I've said this before and it's worth saying again that any experience as tragic and as awful as it might have been and it's over needs to be over. You need to put that into the experience file of your life's filing cabinet and put it away. The only thing you need out of that are the lessons learned. That's it. You don't need to relearn, redo the trauma over and over again. You don't need to go through all the bad things that happened over and over again. What is the point of that? Except to take you down and to suck away the very marrow of your life. That's what that does. So if we're gonna reclaim our energy, we've got to reclaim our time and we've got to reclaim our thought life. So let's be people who in the very beginning, maybe we're out there, you know, Seth Godin calls it the thrashing principle. We're out there, we're just trying all kinds of things. We're trying to figure out all of those things. Write it all down. Do a brain dump onto a paper. That's what I do. Anytime I like my head's going a million miles an hour and I'm like, oh, I gotta get out of this and oh, I'm doing that. And, Ooh, squirrel, <laughs> you know, whatever is going on. It's time to settle things down and to cool the inflammation of thought, right? That's an inflammation thing right there. Write it all down, write it all down and then start putting it in different containers. So here's some work stuff. Here's some personal stuff. Here's some goal stuff that I wanna you know, do in my life. Here's some, th here's some things that I need to do physically. Here are some things that I need to do for you know, food-wise, et cetera. Then go through, what are the corrective measures that you can make? You know, when we start to sort things, it's like sorting laundry. Instead of throwing you know, the, the brand new dark blue jeans that you just got and your white towels together and putting it on hot and adding bleach, whoops. <laughs> That's what we have a tendency to do. That's the way our our brains go. When we drop that and make a decision instead to be sorting and to putting things in their proper containers, we can do things one thing at a time. We can bust the myth of, of being those people who do all these multitasking things and they're just geniuses and amazing and they are super women. They can do anything and we can't. We're back to the whole comparison thing, you know, and the, there goes the joy sucked right out. So where do we go from here? What do we do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we have to always go back to center. Going back to center, this is where your beautiful self is housed. It's your body, I mean, it's your soul, it's your empathy, it's the Holy Spirit, it's everything about you that's deep and beautiful. It's all right here. Nurture that. Start nurturing that. Your meditation is just, is, okay, it came back. Uh, number two, what is the other thing that we need to do? We need to have a good relationship with the people around us. There are people in your life that maybe shouldn't be there. And I'm talking about friends that backhanded compliments, friends who are friends only when they need something. You know, start evaluating some of these things. If somebody makes you feel bad, that's not somebody that you want on your list. Those are things that we need to be looking at. Put yourself and plug yourself into a community of like-minded women who have your back, who wanna see you rise up, who wanna see you live your best life, who want to see vibrancy in their, your life as much as they wanna see it in yours. You know, that, this, that brings tears to my eyes because that's a fellowship. That's beyond community, that's a fellowship. We've got that and I, I, I can't even tell you how grateful I am for it because for me, I need, I, I'm sorry y'all, I need you. I need to have that. I need to have this community. I have to, I need to know that I can go here. I need to know that I can write to my body clutter buddy and say, you know, I'm just really having a crappy day. Help me out here. Help me to see things in the correct perspective. And then the last thing too that we need to do is we need to be really plugged into what's going on and calling it out as we see it. 
You know, I'm not talking about living in the negative. I'm talking about being directive. This doesn't work. What should I do instead? Do the whole thing, you know, the A, B, C, you know, I've, I've shown you this before where you take a, a piece of paper, put a line down the middle. This is what I'm doing. This is what I want instead. Build the bridge. How do I get there? We all have those things. It's blind spots mostly, but they come up as we start to evaluate all these different things. This is how we live a life that is beyond uh, just being time efficient, but more energy efficient. This is how our, our vibrancy gets lit up by focusing on these very things. I hope that was helpful for you. This was helpful for me. I'll tell you, I needed this today. <laughs> and I so appreciate you and I thank you so much. And I will see you, most of you, I hope, at 7 p.m. tonight, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash burn. This is about the sprint, what's next? Because there's always a what's next, right? If you are deciding for yourself that you want to continue this vibrant path, you got to be there tonight, okay? If you can't be there tonight, no worries. We'll send you the replay, but you got to sign up. Savingdinner.com. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.